All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how you can fix your exposure in your natural light photos. More specifically, I want to refer to how you can isolate elements of your photograph and then adjust the exposure on just the part you want to fix. So you may be familiar with Lightroom and if you are familiar with Lightroom, you may be aware that it has a pretty robust set of tools for creating masks and helping you to isolate your subject from your background. Now Capture One does have tools to help you create masks, but they're not exactly at the same level, at least not as of Capture One version 22. Now you may be using Capture One because you like the way it processes your raw files um, better than Lightroom or maybe you are using it because you like the flexibility you have in adjusting your color. Either way, this is going to be basically a tutorial to show people who are new to Capture One how they can isolate elements of their photo and adjust the exposure. So I'm gonna use this example image here that you're looking at on the screen. Now you may look at this and be like, you know what, this looks good as it is. I really don't wanna do anything to it. And then you have people who are gonna have different opinions as to how much they wanna change an image. So maybe on a basic level, you just may want to adjust your exposure a little bit, maybe just for the background. Maybe you like the exposure on her, but you don't like the exposure on the background. Maybe you want it to be a little bit darker. In that case, we can go ahead and easily adjust that. We're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna focus on isolating the background and using the masking tools that are available. So one of the things that I recommend having turned on in Capture One uh, to help you uh, quickly identify if you have overexposed areas it's going to be up here at the top. It's gonna to be the exposure warning. So if you click on it, so you're gonna have some areas in red. So in my case, the red color is basically showing some areas that are overexposed. Now it's not a lot, it's not a lot, mind you. Uh, but in this case, what I wanna do is take this whole background and just bring it down a little bit. Now you can just bring down the highlights or you can bring down the exposure and you'll be able to kind of see the effect and you can decide what's gonna work best for you in your individual case. So I'm actually going to reset this and set this to zero for the highlights and you'll see what it originally looked like, okay? So you can see here, we have these bigger spots of red that shows overexposure. I'm gonna turn this warning off and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So off and on, off and on. I'm just going to actually turn this back on and I'm gonna bring down these highlights and you see it mostly goes away. I wanna have full control over this. So I'm gonna show you what the final result looks like. So I have a layer here that I created earlier. Turn it on and you can see that I have basically painted over this background here. This is my mask and this is gonna show you what the final result looks like. So I pressed M and M hides the mask. So now you can see the final look. So this is after, this is before. Okay, so you can see what I did here was I adjusted the exposure a little bit by negative 0.45 and then I adjusted the highlights down to negative 52. 
and I like this look. So this would be the foundation for what I would work with to either export out or to bring into Photoshop and make any other small additional changes. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how you can do this. So I'm going to start by clicking here. Then I'm going to click new empty adjustment layer. I'm going to hide my original, double click and name this background correction two. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to look here. We have our mask tool and then we have our magic brush tool. Now the magic brush tool, if you're familiar with uh, Photoshop or other applications that allow you to um, select based on color tolerance, uh, what you'll be able to see is based on how you bring this number up here, this tolerance, it will impact how much color it grabs, okay? So the bigger the number, the broader range of colors it will select, the smaller number, the smaller range of colors it will select. So we're gonna start by using these numbers here. I'm gonna click here in the center. And I'll press M again, and you'll be able to see how much it's selected. So it's not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and use it again. Use it a few more times, just as a starting point. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and adjust the tolerance up and you can see how that's gonna select more. So you see there it grabbed way too much. So I'm gonna undo that. All right, I think this is a good starting point. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click on just the draw mask. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna quickly just go and paint over these areas. Now, I'm not gonna try to make this perfect. I'm just gonna kinda quickly go over this. Just so you can kinda see the impact in general. If you want, you can make this a bit bigger, a bit smaller. I'm gonna zoom in here. Get your hands. E on my keyboard, the keyboard shrug got to erase. Use B to go back to selecting the hand here. So you can go back and forth between using keyboard shortcuts B and E to select what you want.
Okay, so this is just a quick mask. Uh, it's not perfect, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how this works. So now we have the mask of her. We are going to invert this. Okay. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna invert the mask. And now the mask is selecting the background instead of her. Now we would go in and just fine tune this to the level that you want. So once again, using B to paint in the areas that you want. All right, so once you are happy with your mask, press M to hide that. Then it's just a matter of adjusting your exposure. Bring this down like this. Or if you want to start by keeping your exposure the same and bring down your highlights. See that got rid of a little bit, but not all of it. So then from there, we can go ahead and bring down the exposure a little bit overall until you don't see any more of those spots. Now you can see the before and after. So before and after. So now we more or less kept the lighting the same on her, but we were able to isolate the background and bring that exposure down so we didn't have areas that looked a little bit too bright okay so i hope that helps if you have any questions put them down in the comments see you next time